Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. In my last video on the DCC Concepts ground signals, I promised that I was going to be doing a follow-up video, this one, on uh, a demonstration of installing the, uh, the, the ground signals, the dwarf signals, uh, somewhere here on the Piedmont Southern layout. I said Amherst and I was going to be using the uh, DCC Concepts IP digital switch machines, but I'll, I'll tell you why I'm not going to be able to do that. We're going to do it with a tortoise switch machine instead. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Now one thing I did say in that, uh, in the closing remarks, um, that I was going to be installing wi it with one of the uh, digital uh, switch machines uh, that uh, DCC Concepts makes. Unfortunately, I looked around on the layout and um, in areas that I, I could potentially do this, and all of the areas where the Southern Railway would have used ground signals, I already have tortoise switch machines installed. And also looking at prototype practices on the Southern, they really didn't use these, uh, these dwarf signals uh, very much outside of yards and particularly busy yards such as uh, Atlanta, Cincinnati, places like that. Um, th there were a few in Charlottesville, Virginia. I came up with some pictures of one of the Westinghouse ones here in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia and a few other places, but uh, generally we're talking about installing these in yards. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to install a pair of these dwarf uh, ground signals in the yard at, Mon at Monroe, Virginia. And we'll be using those to uh, control access to the main line from a passing siding within the yard. And that's one of the things that the, uh, that the Southern would have uh, potentially used these for. And uh, they really, really didn't use these a lot outside uh, of the yard areas. Okay, so these are the, uh, the two ground signals I'm going to be installing today. You'll note, I'm, you probably can't see it, but I have uh, gone ahead and uh, done some dry brushing as I described. And I've also painted the bases a concrete color because on the southern they did use uh, cast concrete bases uh, in many locations. So I went ahead and painted them that way uh, for this installation. Now let me also show you something I've done on this one. You notice it's got a pretty hefty bend in it. You can see that right there. And the reason I did that, and I'll show you this in a minute, um, directly underneath the location for this particular signal, there is a 2x4. So in order to uh, get this to go where I wanted it to go, I had to drill in at an angle. It's about a 45 degree angle here. And so I just took a pair of, of needle nose pliers and very carefully and very slowly bent this to shape so that it would fit down that 45 degree angle hole and come out just to the side of the two by four and give me clearance. So that's where I'll be uh, doing the installation today, and we'll take a look at that. Now, another thing that uh, came up. Um, when I was testing this, and, and testing this angle and, and the like, and seeing if I could actually uh, install this signal where I wanted to, um, I started playing around with um, the size of the holes. Because, you know, this is a fairly small diameter shaft right here, mounting shaft, but the thing at the end, that's about a uh, little over three millimeters wide and about five millimeters long. So it's not going to go through the same hole that this is. So I mentioned this, I ended up uh, as a test for the first shot um, drilling that angled hole with a quarter inch drill bit. And that worked out fine, it'll, it'll fit down through there. And I mentioned this to the folks at uh, DCC Concepts. And what they suggested was using a three millimeter drill bit, drill two holes side by side, and then using the bit, just wiggle it back and forth to open up the little uh, space between them uh, and create an elliptical hole about three millimeters wide and six millimeters long. 
And so that's what we'll be trying today, okay? If that doesn't work, I've got the quarter inch drill bit and we can go back to that. Now with the uh, tortoise switch machine, I'm gonna have to attach my leads to the uh, circuit board here. Uh, this little guy here with the uh, two leads, that's for the uh, reversing DC power. And uh, that's going to have to be connected to the white and the black wires here on my tortoise switch machines. And that's the con these are the colors that I use on all my tortoises to be consistent. So white and black are the two wires that uh, provide power to the tortoise switch machine. And that's what, uh, that's what this guy needs to be connected to. Um, now I could, have, uh, I could just go ahead and solder directly to it, but I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a quick connect or a quick splice here that I've shown you before. Uh, it's a suitcase connector and that's going to allow me to just put the uh, quick splice onto the wire here like so. And then I'll be able to slide the wire that goes to the interface board right in here and close it and that will give me a splice right away without any soldering at all. And so I'm going to do that on both of those wires. Now another option would be to use the T-taps and I showed how to use these in a previous video uh, on suitcase connectors. And once that is clamped down over the wire just like that, then I have attached these uh, spade lug uh, connectors here to the ends of the two wires on another one. And all you have to do, once this guy is installed and crimped onto a wire, this goes into here and it clips in and that makes a connection and it's removable. You can just pull it right out. So that uh, is a pretty handy thing. I was going to try that but because it is so easy to change the polarity of the uh, individual ground signal and get the color combination you want, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, attach them using the quick splice and then make the uh, ground signal connections here and just swap them to get the colors I want. So that'll be the uh, a fast and easy way uh, without doing any soldering uh, to get these done. Okay, so that's all I can think of right now that I need to talk to you about in advance. Let's go ahead and move over to the layout and um, go ahead and get started over there. Now, right here and here are the two spots where I'm going to be installing these uh, ground signals. Now, you can see I've already drilled the hole here because I needed that angle shot to make sure that I was going to get past the 2x4 directly under this track. Um, what we've got here is, this is the northbound main, this is the southbound main, this is the north passing track, and this is the south passing track. So basically we have a situation where the main comes down through here, the passing track comes through here, and joins the main at this turnout right here. So we have to protect the main at this point. So I'm going to put a dwarf signal right here uh, to uh, control the movement of the mainline trains into this turnout. And we're going to put another one right here on the other side uh, to control the movement of the trains coming by on the passing siding that would come back into the main here. So what we're going to do is, let me first show you how this one goes in. And literally, I just took a drill and drilled a hole at an angle through here uh, and uh, at a 45 so that I would miss that uh, 2 by 4 underneath here. And then that quarter inch hole that I drilled, you know, it's plenty big for this wire to go down through. So you can see it just snakes right on through there and comes out underneath here under the layout and would fall through if I don't grab it. Okay, so how am I going to stabilize that? Well, I just took some chunks of styrofoam and I'm going to fit those down in here. Let me get a uh, let me get a pair of tweezers so that I can do this. And what I'm going to do is just take chunks of styrofoam and we're going to put that in here to fill the hole and support the signal itself. Put one on either side of it here so that we stabilize it. And I'm going to want this 
concrete base that I've created to be sitting at about the same level as the ballast. Like that. Okay. And we'll level it out later when we get the ballast on installed. So let me get some more chunks of this uh, styrofoam so that we can really stabilize this guy down in here. And it's literally just a matter of shoving enough down in there to uh, create a stable base for our uh, for our dwarf for our dwarf signal. That's going to be a bit too big, I think. Yeah, put that one down in there. Okay. Now, one thing I will point out when you're if you need, do need to do any of these bends, be very careful about it. You know, go very slow. Um, you don't want to break it, and you don't want to crimp it and uh, cut through your wires. I guess you could go ahead and pull it apart and solder them back together again and protect them with heat shrink tubing and you'd be in good shape. But you don't want to have to do that and, and you can get these bins quite easily if you're very slow about it. Make very slow, deliberate bins. Okay, so that's pretty much in place. And once the ballast is set in here around it and, it, uh, and, and some ballast cement is applied, that's going to be very, very stable. So let's take a look at that. So that gives you an idea of what that's going to look like once it's set in place. Okay, now, the next step. Let's drill a hole here for our other signal. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna put it right here and um, we can go straight down with that. So I'm just gonna put it right here on the shoulder a little bit and drill down. Okay, and I'll point out this is a 1 8 inch drill bit that comes in. I'm using a 1 8 inch drill bit and that works out to about 3.15 millimeters. So two holes together should be just perfect for this. So I'm essentially using that drill bit as a router bit to open up a hole in there. Uh, let's see what I can run down through here and clean out that hole a little. There's a little something that's hanging on down in there. So let's go ahead and hit it a couple of times more. We'll ream it again. I'm going to get my shop vac and uh, we'll go ahead and clean that out and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so that's got that cleaned up. Let's see how it's going to fit. You want to make sure your wire is good and straight when you start it down the hole. And there it goes. Worked just like a charm. Now what I'm going to do is take my X-Acto knife, number 11 blade, and we'll go ahead and make a notch right here in the side of the ballast so that our um, signal is going to sit properly. Do that and come back up here. And basically what I'm doing at this point is just cutting through the cork road bed here. Okay. 
Okay, Let's see how that's going to look. All right, that looks great. So the next step will be to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and apply some ballast here while we're at it since it's so easy to do. Okay, that's that side. Let's get the uh, get this one done. Got to get this smoothed in here nice and level. Although I'll probably knock it off before I get a chance to ballast it or to cement it in. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think it's uh, pretty well seated and uh, facing in the right direction. So that's what they're going to look like uh, without the light. So let's go underneath and we'll make the connections uh, to the wiring. Okay, so uh, here we are underneath the layout. You can see these are the two wires that come down for the ground signals that I just installed. These two wires right here, this white and this black one, that I've got uh, connected together here with a little wire tie, um, these are the two wires that go to the tortoise switch machine. So all I need to do is go ahead and use my quick splices right here to splice the two wires that power the interface board and these ground signals uh, from these wires that are going to supply power to that specific turnout. And um, these come from the output or the outlets on my Switch 8 accessory uh, decoder. So the wire, you know, they run all the way back to the uh, control panel and then they are positive and negative. Uh, DC power running to the tortoise switch machine. And of course they're reversing, so they'll be positive one time and negative, and then negative and then positive once I throw the turnout to reverse it. And the same thing will happen with the lights, uh, the color to the ground signal lights. So what I'm going to do now here is grab those quick connects and the, um, uh, and the connecting wire and we'll make a splice. Okay, I've got my wires, so let's go ahead and do some crimping. Here we go. Now I'm going to want to put my uh, interface board back over in here somewhere so that I can plug these two guys into it. So I want this as far to the left as I can get it. And then we're going to take, I'm going to connect the red wire here. to the white wire and try to hold this in place there and this um, this quick spice connector is rated for 18 to 22 gauge wires Okay, that seems to have caught, so let's get that closed. Okay, there. And we'll do the black one. Yep. There. And I'm going to Slip the wire up in here. And we'll do a crimp. OK, 
Now giving each one a gentle tug to make sure that everything is going to hold. Okay, let's go ahead and make the connection. So um, right here is the uh, connection for the analog or digit or omega or tortoise connection here. So this is where we're going to power it to find the right side. Yep, there we go. So that is providing power now to the interface board. And let's go ahead and make the uh, connections over the individual ground signals. Okay, so that's it right there. And now all I have to do is attach it to the underside or the side of this uh, 2x4 and it should be stable. But until I get it tested, I'm not going to make that permanent connection. I'm going to set it on this little drawer here. And let's go ahead. I'm going to power up the uh, accessory decoder and see if the turn and, and we'll see if it works. Well, they didn't work. And I was afraid that might happen because I'm afraid that this wire here is too small to work with an, a size uh, 18 to 22 uh, quick splice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to put the um, T-taps in here and then we'll test it that way. So that's the uh, reason I went ahead and prepared these uh, T-taps because I was afraid that might happen. So let me get this out of here. There. Let's go ahead and install these T-taps. Okay, that's got those in there. We'll go ahead and uh, insert the uh, lugs. Or the spade connectors, whatever these are. There we go, so that's in there. And let's pull the uh, card out and attach it. Set that up and we'll give it a try again. Okay, so that's all it was. It was a matter of just swapping out those connectors. The, uh, the quick splices uh, at uh, 22 gauge are just still too large to work with those very, very fine wires that come with these uh, DCC Concepts uh, interfaces. So uh, make sure you use those uh, uh, T-taps that I showed you and look back at the video on suitcase connectors that I did uh, not long ago uh, to get a feeling for how those actually work because they're very easy to install. So let me show you that uh, right now the main line is set for through and it's got a green light so let's throw the switch and now the uh, passing track uh, has, the, uh, has the turnout so it's gone green and we've got a red light showing on the main line to stop traffic from trying to go through a closed switch and running into another locomotive coming out onto the main. So that's exactly what we wanted to do. And that's all there is to it. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Uh, I think this shows that these can be a pretty quick and easy way to install dwarf ground signals on your model railroad even where you've already pre-installed your tortoise switch machines. It's a simple matter to just go back and splice these uh, wires in uh, to the interface board and connect up your ground signals and you're ready to run. At some point in the future I will be installing uh, some more of these ground signals using the digital uh, switch machine from DCC Concepts. So 
just have to hold on until I get a chance to get some more work done here on the layout and find a location that, uh, that these are going to work in other than one of my yard areas here. As far as uh, video for Friday, um, I have no idea what it's going to be about. So you'll just have to come back on Friday and see uh, what, uh, what comes up. So have a good week and we'll see you here on Friday with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.